Meaning of Life, Wikipedia Article Audio The meaning of life, or the answer to the question what is the meaning of life, pertains to the significance of living or existence in general. Many other related questions include, why are we here, what is life all about, or what is the purpose of existence? There have been a large number of proposed answers to these questions from many different cultural and ideological backgrounds. The search for life's meaning has produced much philosophical, scientific, theological and metaphysical speculation throughout history. Different people and cultures believe different things for the answer to this question. Questions Scientific Inquiry and Perspectives Psychological Significance and Value in Life Origin and Nature of Biological Life Origins and Ultimate Fate of the Universe Scientific Questions about the Mind Parapsychology Nature of Meaning in Life Western Philosophical Perspectives Ancient Greek philosophy Platonism Aristotelianism Cynicism Cyrenaicism Epicureanism Stoicism Enlightenment philosophy Classical liberalism Kantianism 19th century philosophy Utilitarianism Nihilism 20th century philosophy Pragmatism Theism Existentialism The meaning of life as we perceive it is derived from philosophical and religious contemplation of and scientific inquiries about existence, social ties, consciousness, and happiness. Many other issues are also involved, such as symbolic meaning, ontology, value, purpose, ethics, good and evil, free will, the existence of one or multiple gods, conceptions of God, the soul, and the afterlife. Scientific contributions focus primarily on describing related empirical facts about the universe, exploring the context and parameters concerning the how of life. Science also studies and can provide recommendations for the pursuit of well-being and a related conception of morality. An alternative, humanistic approach poses the question, what is the meaning of my life? Absurdism Secular Humanism Questions about the meaning of life have been expressed in a broad variety of ways, including the following. Logical Positivism Postmodernism These questions have resulted in a wide range of competing answers and arguments, from scientific theories, to philosophical, theological, and spiritual explanations. Many members of the scientific community and philosophy of science communities think that science can provide the relevant context, and set of parameters necessary for dealing with topics related to the meaning of life. In their view, science can offer a wide range of insights on topics ranging from the science of happiness to death anxiety. Scientific inquiry facilitates this through nomological investigation into various aspects of life and reality, such as the Big Bang, the origin of life and evolution, and by studying the objective factors which correlate with the subjective experience of meaning and happiness. Researchers in positive psychology study empirical factors that lead to life satisfaction, full engagement in activities, making a fuller contribution by utilizing one's personal strengths, and meaning based on investing in something larger than the self. 
Large data studies of flow experiences have consistently suggested that humans experience meaning and fulfillment when mastering challenging tasks, and that the experience comes from the way tasks are approached and performed rather than the particular choice of task. For example, flow experiences can be obtained by prisoners in concentration camps with minimal facilities, and occur only slightly more often in billionaires. A classic example is of two workers on an apparently boring production line in a factory. One treats the work as a tedious chore while the other turns it into a game to see how fast she can make each unit, and achieves flow in the process. Neuroscience describes reward, pleasure, and motivation in terms of neurotransmitter activity especially in the limbic system and the ventral tegmental area in particular. If one believes that the meaning of life is to maximize pleasure and to ease general life, then this allows normative predictions about how to act to achieve this. Likewise, some ethical naturalists advocate a science of morality a euro the empirical pursuit of flourishing for all conscious creatures. Experimental philosophy and neuroethics research collects data about human ethical decisions in controlled scenarios such as trolley problems. It has shown that many types of ethical judgment are universal across cultures, suggesting that they may be innate, whilst others are culture-specific. The findings show actual human ethical reasoning to be at odds with most logical philosophical theories for example consistently showing distinctions between action by cause and action by omission which would be absent from utility-based theories. Cognitive science has theorized about differences between conservative and liberal ethics and how they may be based on different metaphors from family life such as strong fathers vs nurturing mother models. Neurotheology is a controversial field which tries to find neural correlates and mechanisms of religious experience. Some researchers have suggested that the human brain has innate mechanisms for such experiences and that living without using them for their evolved purposes may be a cause of imbalance. Studies have reported conflicted results on correlating happiness with religious belief and it is difficult to find unbiased meta-analyses. Sociology examines value at a social level using theoretical constructs such as value theory, norms, anime, etc. One value system suggested by social psychologists, broadly called terror management theory, states that human meaning is derived from a fundamental fear of death, and values are selected when they allow us to escape the mental reminder of death. Emerging research shows that meaning in life predicts better physical health outcomes. Greater meaning has been associated with a reduced risk of Alzheimer's disease, reduced risk of heart attack among individuals with coronary heart disease, reduced risk of stroke, and increased longevity in both American and Japanese samples. In 2014, the British National Health Service began recommending a five-step plan for mental well-being based on meaningful lives, whose steps are, connect with community and family, physical exercise, lifelong learning, giving to others, mindfulness of the world around you. The exact mechanisms of abiogenesis are unknown. Notable hypotheses include the RNA world hypothesis and the iron sulfur world hypothesis. The process by which different life forms have developed throughout history via genetic mutation and natural selection is explained by evolution. At the end of the 20th century, based upon insight gleaned from the gene centered view of evolution, Biologists George C. Williams, Richard Dawkins, and David Haig, among others, concluded that if there is a primary function to life, it is the replication of DNA and the survival of one's genes. This view has not achieved universal agreement, Jeremy Griffith is a notable exception, 
maintaining that the meaning of life is to be integrative. Responding to an interview question from Richard Dawkins about what it is all for, James Watson stated I don't think we're for anything. We're just the products of evolution. Though scientists have intensively studied life on Earth, defining life in unequivocal terms is still a challenge. Physically, one may say that life feeds on negative entropy which refers to the process by which living entities decrease their internal entropy at the expense of some form of energy taken in from the environment. Biologists generally agree that life forms are self-organizing systems which regulate their internal environments as to maintain this organized state, metabolism serves to provide energy, and reproduction causes life to continue over a span of multiple generations. Typically, organisms are responsive to stimuli and genetic information changes from generation to generation resulting in adaptation through evolution, this optimizes the chances of survival for the individual organism and its descendants respectively. Non-cellular replicating agents, notably viruses, are generally not considered to be organisms because they are incapable of independent reproduction or metabolism. This classification is problematic, though since some parasites and endosymbionts are also incapable of independent life. Astrobiology studies the possibility of different forms of life on other worlds, including replicating structures made from materials other than DNA. Though the Big Bang theory was met with much skepticism when first introduced, it has become well supported by several independent observations. However, Current physics can only describe the early universe from 10 a 43 seconds after the Big Bang, a theory of quantum gravity would be required to understand events before that time. Nevertheless, many physicists have speculated about what would have preceded this limit, and how the universe came into being. For example, one interpretation is that the Big Bang occurred coincidentally, and when considering the anthropic principle, it is sometimes interpreted as implying the existence of a multiverse. The ultimate fate of the universe, and implicitly humanity, is hypothesized as one in which biological life will eventually become unsustainable, such as through a big freeze, big rip, or big crunch. Theoretical cosmology studies many alternative speculative models for the origin and fate of the universe beyond the Big Bang theory. A recent trend has been models of the creation of baby universes inside black holes, with our own Big Bang being a white hole on the inside of a black hole in another parent universe. Multiverse theories claim that every possibility of quantum mechanics is played out in parallel universes. The nature and origin of consciousness and the mind itself are also widely debated in science. The explanatory gap is generally equated with the hard problem of consciousness, and the question of free will is also considered to be of fundamental importance. These subjects are mostly addressed in the fields of cognitive science, neuroscience, and philosophy of mind though some evolutionary biologists and theoretical physicists have also made several allusions to the subject. Reductionistic and eliminative materialistic approaches, for example the multiple drafts model, hold that consciousness can be wholly explained by neuroscience through the workings of the brain and its neurons, thus adhering to biological naturalism. On the other hand, some scientists, like Andre Linda, have considered that consciousness, like space-time, might have its own intrinsic degrees of freedom, and that one's perceptions may be as real as material objects. Hypotheses of consciousness and space-time explain consciousness in describing a space of conscious elements, often encompassing a number of extra dimensions. 
Electromagnetic theories of consciousness solve the binding problem of consciousness in saying that the electromagnetic field generated by the brain is the actual carrier of conscious experience, there is however disagreement about the implementations of such a theory relating to other workings of the mind. Quantum mind theories use quantum theory in explaining certain properties of the mind. Explaining the process of free will through quantum phenomena is a popular alternative to determinism. Based on the premises of non-materialistic explanations of the mind, some have suggested the existence of a cosmic consciousness, asserting that consciousness is actually the ground of all being. Proponents of this view cite accounts of paranormal phenomena primarily extrasensory perceptions and psychic powers, as evidence for an incorporeal higher consciousness. In hopes of proving the existence of these phenomena, parapsychologists have orchestrated various experiments, but successful results might be due to poor experimental controls and might have alternative explanations. The most common definitions of meaning in life involves three components. First, Recker and Wang defined personal meaning as the cognizance of order, coherence, and purpose in one's existence, the pursuit and attainment of worthwhile goals, and an accompanying sense of fulfillment. Recently, Martela and Steger have defined meaning as coherence, purpose, and significance. In contrast, Wang has proposed a four component solution to the question of meaning in life. The four components are purpose, understanding, responsibility, and enjoyment. Thus, a sense of significance permeates every dimension of meaning, rather than stands as a separate factor. Although most psychology researchers consider meaning in life as a subjective feeling or judgment, most philosophers propose that there are also objective, concrete criteria for what constitutes meaning in life. Wang has proposed that whether life is meaningful depends not only on subjective feelings but, more importantly, on whether a person's goal striving in life as a whole is meaningful according to some objective normative standard. The philosophical perspectives on the meaning of life are those ideologies which explain life in terms of ideals or abstractions defined by humans. Plato, a pupil of Socrates, was one of the earliest, most influential philosophers. His reputation comes from his idealism of believing in the existence of universals. His theory of forms proposes that universals do not physically exist, like objects, but as heavenly forms. In the Dialogue of the Republic, the character of Socrates describes the form of the good. His theory on justice in the soul relates to the idea of happiness relevant to the question of the meaning of life. In Platonism, the meaning of life is in attaining the highest form of knowledge which is the idea of the good, from which all good and just things derive utility and value. Aristotle, an apprentice of Plato, was another early and influential philosopher, who argued that ethical knowledge is not certain knowledge, but is general knowledge. Because it is not a theoretical discipline, a person had to study and practice in order to become good. Thus if the person were to become virtuous, he could not simply study what virtue is, he had to be virtuous, via virtuous activities. To do this, Aristotle established what is virtuous. Every skill and every inquiry, and similarly, every action and choice of action, is thought to have some good as its object. This is why the good has rightly been defined as the object of all endeavor, everything is done with a goal, and that goal is good. Yet, if action A is done towards achieving goal B, then goal B also would have a goal, goal C, and goal C also would have a goal, and so would continue this pattern, until something stopped its infinite regression. 
Aristotle's solution is the highest good, which is desirable for its own sake. It is its own goal. The highest good is not desirable for the sake of achieving some other good, and all other goods desirable for its sake. This involves achieving eudaimonia, usually translated as happiness, well-being, flourishing, and excellence. What is the meaning of life? What's it all about? Who are we, Philosopher in Meditation by Rembrandt, why are we here? What are we here for, what is the origin of life, what is the nature of life? What is the nature of reality, what is the purpose of life? What is the purpose of one's life, what is the significance of life? A euro see also a psychological significance and value in life, what is meaningful and valuable in life, what is the value of life, what is the reason to live? What are we living for? Naturalistic Pantheism Embodied Cognition East Asian Philosophical Perspectives Moism Confucianism Legalism Religious Perspectives Western Religions Zoroastrianism Islam Baha'i Faith Judaism Christianity South Asian Religions Hindu Philosophies Advaita and Dvaita Hinduism Vaishnavism Jainism Buddhism Earlier Buddhism Mahayana Buddhism Sikhism East Asian Religions Taoism Shinto New Religions In Popular Culture Popular Views To Realize One's Potential and Ideals To Achieve Biological Perfection to seek wisdom and knowledge. To do good, to do the right thing. Meanings relating to religion. To love, to feel, to enjoy the act of living. To have power, to be better. Life has no meaning. One should not seek to know and understand the meaning of life. Life is bad. Suicide, a solution in which a person simply ends one's own life. Both Kierkegaard and Camus dismiss the viability of this option, religious belief in a transcendent realm or being, a solution in which one believes in the existence of a reality that is beyond the absurd, and, as such, has meaning. Kierkegaard stated that a belief in anything beyond the absurd requires a non-rational but perhaps necessary religious acceptance in such an intangible and empirically unprovable thing. However, Camus regarded this solution as philosophical suicide. Acceptance of the absurd, a solution in which one accepts and even embraces the absurd and continues to live in spite of it. Camus endorsed this solution, while Kierkegaard regarded this solution as demoniac madness, he rages most of all at the thought that eternity might get it into its head to take his misery from him. What is the highest good in all matters of action? To the name, there is almost complete agreement, for uneducated and educated alike call it happiness and make happiness identical with the good life and successful living. They disagree, however, about the meaning of happiness. Antisthenes, a pupil of Socrates, first outlined the themes of cynicism, stating that the purpose of life is living a life of virtue which agrees with nature. Happiness depends upon being self-sufficient and master of one's mental attitude. Suffering is the consequence of false judgments of value, 
which cause negative emotions and a concomitant vicious character. The cynical life rejects conventional desires for wealth, power, health, and fame, by being free of the possessions acquired in pursuing the conventional. As reasoning creatures, people could achieve happiness via rigorous training, by living in a way natural to human beings. The world equally belongs to everyone, so suffering is caused by false judgments of what is valuable and what is worthless per the customs and conventions of society. Aristippus of Cyrene, a pupil of Socrates, founded an early Socratic school that emphasized only one side of Socrates's teachings, that happiness is one of the ends of moral action and that pleasure is the supreme good, thus a hedonistic worldview, wherein bodily gratification is more intense than mental pleasure. Cyrenaics prefer immediate gratification to the long-term gain of delayed gratification, denial is unpleasant unhappiness. Epicurus, a pupil of the Platonist Pamphilus of Samos, taught that the greatest good is in seeking modest pleasures, to attain tranquility and freedom from fear via knowledge, friendship, and virtuous, temperate living, bodily pain is absent through one's knowledge of the workings of the world and of the limits of one's desires. Combined, freedom from pain and freedom from fear are happiness in its highest form. Epicurus lauded enjoyment of simple pleasures is quasi-ascetic abstention from sex and the appetites. When we say, that pleasure is the end and aim, we do not mean the pleasures of the prodigal or the pleasures of sensuality, as we are understood to do, by some, through ignorance, prejudice or willful misrepresentation. By pleasure we mean the absence of pain in the body and of trouble in the soul. It is not by an unbroken succession of drinking bouts and of revelry, not by sexual lust, nor the enjoyment of fish, and other delicacies of a luxurious table, which produce a pleasant life, it is sober reasoning, searching out the grounds of every choice and avoidance, and banishing those beliefs through which the greatest tumults take possession of the soul. The Epicurean meaning of life rejects immortality and mysticism, there is a soul, but it is as mortal as the body. There is no afterlife, yet, one need not fear death, because death is nothing to us, for that which is dissolved, is without sensation, and that which lacks sensation is nothing to us. Zeno of Sidium, a pupil of Crates of Thebes, established the school which teaches that living according to reason and virtue is to be in harmony with the universe's divine order, entailed by one's recognition of the universal logos, or reason, an essential value of all people. The meaning of life is freedom from suffering through apatheia that is, being objective and having clear judgment, not indifference. Stoicism's prime directives are virtue, reason, and natural law, abided to develop personal self-control and mental fortitude as means of overcoming destructive emotions. The Stoic does not seek to extinguish emotions, only to avoid emotional troubles, by developing clear judgment and inner calm through diligently practiced logic, reflection, and concentration. The Stoic ethical foundation is that good lies in the state of the soul, itself, exemplified in wisdom and self-control, thus improving one's spiritual well-being, virtue consists in a will which is in agreement with nature. The principle applies to one's personal relations thus, to be free from anger, envy, and jealousy. The Enlightenment and the colonial era both changed the nature of European philosophy and exported it worldwide. Devotion and subservience to God were largely replaced by notions of inalienable natural rights and the potentialities of reason, and universal ideals of love and compassion gave way to civic notions of freedom, equality, and citizenship. 
the meaning of life changed as well, focusing less on humankind's relationship to God and more on the relationship between individuals and their society. This era is filled with theories that equate meaningful existence with the social order. Classical liberalism is a set of ideas that arose in the 17th and 18th centuries, out of conflicts between a growing, wealthy, propertied class and the established aristocratic and religious orders that dominated Europe. Liberalism cast humans as beings with inalienable natural rights, and sought out means to balance rights across society. Broadly speaking, it considers individual liberty to be the most important goal, because only through insured liberty are the other inherent rights protected. There are many forms and derivations of liberalism, but their central conceptions of the meaning of life trace back to three main ideas. Early thinkers such as John Locke, Jean-Jacques Rousseau and Adam Smith saw humankind beginning in the state of nature, then finding meaning for existence through labor and property, and using social contracts to create an environment that supports those efforts. Kantianism is a philosophy based on the ethical, epistemological, and metaphysical works of Immanuel Kant. Kant is known for his deontological theory where there is a single moral obligation, the categorical imperative, derived from the concept of duty. Kantians believe all actions are performed in accordance with some underlying maxim or principle, and for actions to be ethical, they must adhere to the categorical imperative. Simply put, the test is that one must universalize the maxim and then see if it would still be possible to perform the maxim in the world without contradiction. In Groundwork, Kant gives the example of a person who seeks to borrow money without intending to pay it back. This is a contradiction because if it were a universal action, no person would lend money anymore as he knows that he will never be paid back. The maxim of this action, says Kant, results in a contradiction in conceivability. Kant also denied that the consequences of an act in any way contribute to the moral worth of that act, his reasoning being that the physical world is outside one's full control and thus one cannot be held accountable for the events that occur in it. The origins of utilitarianism can be traced back as far as Epicurus, but, as a school of thought, it is credited to Jeremy Bentham, who found that nature has placed mankind under the governance of two sovereign masters, pain and pleasure, then, from that moral insight, deriving the rule of utility, that the good is whatever brings the greatest happiness to the greatest number of people. He defined the meaning of life as the greatest happiness principle. Jeremy Bentham's foremost proponent was James Mill, a significant philosopher in his day, and father of John Stuart Mill. The younger Mill was educated per Bentham's principles, including transcribing and summarizing much of his father's work. Nihilism suggests that life is without objective meaning. Friedrich Nietzsche characterized nihilism as emptying the world, and especially human existence, of meaning, purpose, comprehensible truth and essential value, succinctly, nihilism is the process of the devaluing of the highest values. Seeing the nihilist as a natural result of the idea that God is dead, and insisting it was something to overcome, his questioning of the nihilist's life-negating values returned meaning to the earth. To Martin Heidegger, Nihilism is the movement whereby being is forgotten, and is transformed into value, in other words, the reduction of being to exchange value. Heidegger, in accordance with Nietzsche, saw in the so-called death of God a potential source for nihilism. If God, as the suprasensory ground and goal, of all reality, is dead, if the suprasensory world of the ideas has suffered the loss of its obligatory, and above it, 
its vitalizing and upbuilding power, then nothing more remains to which man can cling, and by which he can orient himself. The French philosopher Albert Camus asserts that the absurdity of the human condition is that people search for external values and meaning in a world which has none, and is indifferent to them. Camus writes of value nihilists such as Missault, but also of values in a nihilistic world, that people can instead strive to be heroic nihilists, living with dignity in the face of absurdity, living with secular saintliness, fraternal solidarity and rebelling against and transcending the world's indifference. The current era has seen radical changes in both formal and popular conceptions of human nature. The knowledge disclosed by modern science has effectively rewritten the relationship of humankind to the natural world. Advances in medicine and technology have freed humans from significant limitations and ailments of previous eras, and philosophy euro particularly following the linguistic turn a euro has altered how the relationships people have with themselves and each other are conceived. Questions about the meaning of life have also seen radical changes, from attempts to re-evaluate human existence in biological and scientific terms to efforts to meta-theorize about meaning-making as a personal, individual-driven activity. Pragmatism, originated in the late 19th century U.S., to concern itself with truth, positing that only in struggling with the environment do data and derived theories have meaning and that consequences, like utility and practicality, are also components of truth. Moreover, pragmatism posits that anything useful and practical is not always true, arguing that what most contributes to the most human good in the long course is true. In practice, theoretical claims must be practically verifiable i.e. one should be able to predict and test claims, and, that, ultimately, the needs of humankind should guide human intellectual inquiry. Pragmatic philosophers suggest that the practical, useful understanding of life is more important than searching for an impractical abstract truth about life. William James argued that truth could be made, but not sought. To a pragmatist, the meaning of life is discoverable only via experience. Theists believe God created the universe and that God had a purpose in doing so. Theists also hold the view that humans find their meaning and purpose for life in God's purpose in creating. Theists further hold that if there were no God to give life ultimate meaning, value, and purpose, then life would be absurd. According to existentialism, each man and each woman creates the essence of their life, life is not determined by a supernatural god or an earthly authority, one is free. As such, one's ethical prime directives are action, freedom and decision, thus, existentialism opposes rationalism and positivism. In seeking meaning to life, the existentialist looks to where people find meaning in life, in course of which using only reason as a source of meaning is insufficient, this gives rise to the emotions of anxiety and dread, felt in considering one's free will, and the concomitant awareness of death. According to Jean-Paul Sartre, existence precedes essence, the of one's life arises only after one comes to existence. S. A. Ren Kierkegaard spoke about a leap, arguing that life is full of absurdity, and one must make his and her own values in an indifferent world. One can live meaningfully in an unconditional commitment to something finite, and devotes that meaningful life to the commitment, despite the vulnerability inherent to doing so. Arthur Schopenhauer answered, What is the meaning of life? By stating that one's life reflects one's will, and that the will is an aimless, irrational, and painful drive. Salvation, deliverance, and escape from suffering are in aesthetic contemplation, 
sympathy for others, and asceticism. For Friedrich Nietzsche, life is worth living only if there are goals inspiring one to live. Accordingly, he saw nihilism as without goals. He stated that asceticism denies one's living in the world, stated that values are not objective facts, that are rationally necessary, universally binding commitments, our evaluations are interpretations, and not reflections of the world, as it is, in itself, and, therefore, all ideations take place from a particular perspective. In absurdist philosophy, the absurd arises out of the fundamental disharmony between the individual's search for meaning and the apparent meaninglessness of the universe. As beings looking for meaning in a meaningless world, humans have three ways of resolving the dilemma. Kierkegaard and Camus describe the solutions in their works, The Sickness Unto Death and the Myth of Sisyphus. Per Secular Humanism the human species came to be by reproducing successive generations in a progression of unguided evolution as an integral expression of nature, which is self-existing. Human knowledge comes from human observation, experimentation, and rational analysis, and not from supernatural sources, the nature of the universe is what people discern it to be. Likewise, values and realities are determined by means of intelligent inquiry and are derived from human need and interest as tested by experience, that is, by critical intelligence. As far as we know, the total personality is of the biological organism transacting in a social and cultural context. People determine human purpose without supernatural influence, it is the human personality that is the purpose of a human being's life. Humanism seeks to develop and fulfill, humanism affirms our ability and responsibility to lead ethical lives of personal fulfillment that aspire to the greater good of humanity. Humanism aims to promote enlightened self-interest and the common good for all people. It is based on the premises that the happiness of the individual person is inextricably linked to the well-being of all humanity, in part because humans are social animals who find meaning in personal relations and because cultural progress benefits everybody living in the culture. The philosophical subgenres post-humanism and transhumanism are extensions of humanistic values. One should seek the advancement of humanity and of all life to the greatest degree feasible and seek to reconcile Renaissance humanism with the 21st century's techno-scientific culture. In this light, every living creature has the right to determine its personal and social meaning of life. From a humanism psychotherapeutic point of view, the question of the meaning of life could be reinterpreted as what is the meaning of my life. This approach emphasizes that the question is personally Euro and avoids focusing on cosmic or religious questions about overarching purpose. There are many therapeutic responses to this question. For example, Viktor Frankl argues for deerflexion, which translates largely as cease endlessly reflecting on the self, instead, engage in life. On the whole, the therapeutic response is that the question itself a euro what is the meaning of life, a euro evaporates when one is fully engaged in life. See also, Existential Therapy and Irvin Yalem. Logical positivists ask, what is the meaning of life, what is the meaning in asking? And if there are no objective values, then, is life meaningless? Ludwig Wittgenstein and the logical positivists said, expressed in language, the question is meaningless, because, in life the statement the meaning of X, usually denotes the consequences of X, or the significance of X, or what is notable about X, etc., thus, when the meaning of life concept equals X, in the statement the meaning of X, 
the statement becomes recursive, and, therefore, nonsensical, or it might refer to the fact that biological life is essential to having a meaning in life. The things in the life of a person can have meaning as parts of a whole, but a discrete meaning of life, itself, aside from those things, cannot be discerned. A person's life has meaning as the life events resulting from their achievements, legacy, family, etc., but, to say that life, itself, has meaning, is a misuse of language, since any note of significance, or of consequence, is relevant only in life, so rendering the statement erroneous. Bertrand Russell wrote that although he found that his distaste for torture was not like his distaste for broccoli, he found no satisfactory, empirical method of proving this. When we try to be definite, as to what we mean when we say that this or that is the good, we find ourselves involved in very great difficulties. Bentham's creed, that pleasure is the good, roused furious opposition, and was said to be a pig's philosophy. Neither he nor his opponents could advance any argument. In a scientific question, evidence can be adduced on both sides, and, in the end, one side is seen to have the better case a euro or, if this does not happen, the question is left undecided. But in a question, as to whether this, or that, is the ultimate good, there is no evidence, either way, each disputant can only appeal to his own emotions, and employ such rhetorical devices as shall rouse similar emotions in others. Questions as to values a euro that is to say, as to what is good or bad on its own account, independently of its effects a euro lie outside the domain of science, as the defenders of religion emphatically assert. I think that, in this, they are right, but, I draw the further conclusion, which they do not draw, that questions as to values lie wholly outside the domain of knowledge. That is to say, when we assert that this, or that, has value, we are giving expression to our own emotions, not to a fact, which would still be true if our personal feelings were different. Postmodernist thought a euro broadly speaking ga euro sees human nature as constructed by language, or by structures and institutions of human society. Unlike other forms of philosophy, postmodernism rarely seeks out a priori or innate meanings in human existence, but instead focuses on analyzing or critiquing given meanings in order to rationalize or reconstruct them. Anything resembling a meaning of life, in postmodernist terms, can only be understood within a social and linguistic framework, and must be pursued as an escape from the power structures that are already embedded in all forms of speech and interaction. As a rule, postmodernists see awareness of the constraints of language as necessary to escaping those constraints but different theorists take different views on the nature of this process, from radical reconstruction of meaning by individuals to theories in which individuals are primarily extensions of language and society, without real autonomy. According to naturalistic pantheism, the meaning of life is to care for and look after nature and the environment. Embodied cognition uses the neurological basis of emotion, speech, and cognition to understand the nature of thought. Cognitive neuropsychology has identified brain areas necessary for these abilities, and genetic studies show that the gene FOXP2 affects neuroplasticity which underlies language fluency. George Lakoff, a professor of cognitive linguistics and philosophy, advances the view that metaphors are the usual basis of meaning, not the logic of verbal symbol manipulation. Computers use logic programming to effectively query databases but humans rely on a trained biological neural network. 
Postmodern philosophies that use the indeterminacy of symbolic language to deny definite meaning ignore those who feel they know what they mean and feel that their interlocutors know what they mean. Choosing the correct metaphor results in enough common understanding to pursue questions such as the meaning of life. Improved knowledge of brain function should result in better treatments producing healthier brains. When combined with more effective training, a sound personal assessment as to the meaning of Oni Euro trademark S life should be straightforward. The Mahist philosophers believed that the purpose of life was universal, impartial love. Moism promoted a philosophy of impartial caring, a person should care equally for all other individuals, regardless of their actual relationship to him or her. The expression of this indiscriminate caring is what makes man a righteous being in Mahist thought. This advocacy of impartiality was a target of attack by the other Chinese philosophical schools, most notably the Confucians who believed that while love should be unconditional, it should not be indiscriminate. For example, children should hold a greater love for their parents than for random strangers. Confucianism recognizes human nature in accordance with the need for discipline and education. Because humankind is driven by both positive and negative influences, Confucianists see a goal in achieving virtue through strong relationships and reasoning as well as minimizing the negative. This emphasis on normal living is seen in the Confucianist scholar Tu Weiming's quote, we can realize the ultimate meaning of life in ordinary human existence. The legalists believed that finding the purpose of life was a meaningless effort. To the legalists, only practical knowledge was valuable, especially as it related to the function and performance of the state. The religious perspectives on the meaning of life are those ideologies which explain life in terms of an implicit purpose not defined by humans. According to the Charter for Compassion signed by many of the world's leading religious and secular organizations, the core of religion is the golden rule of treat others as you would have them treat you. The Charter's founder, Karen Armstrong, quotes the ancient Rabbi Hillel who suggested that the rest is commentary. This is not to reduce the commentary's importance, and Armstrong considers that its study, interpretation, and ritual are the means by which religious people internalize and live the golden rule. Zoroastrianism is the religion and philosophy named after its prophet Zoroaster which is believed to have influenced the beliefs of Judaism and its descendant religions. Zoroastrians believe in a universe created by a transcendental god, Ahuram Mazda, to whom all worship is ultimately directed. Ahuram Mazda's creation is Asha, truth, and order, and it is in conflict with its antithesis, Druj, falsehood, and disorder. Since humanity possesses free will, people must be responsible for their moral choices. By using free will, people must take an active role in the universal conflict, with good thoughts, good words, and good deeds to ensure happiness and to keep chaos at bay. In Islam, humanity's ultimate purpose is to discover their Creator Allah through His signs and be grateful to him through sincere love and devotion. This is practically shown by following the divine guidelines revealed in the Quran and the tradition of the Prophet. Earthly life is a test, determining one's position of closeness to Allah in the hereafter. A person will either be close to him and his love in Jannah or far away in Hahanam. For Allah's satisfaction, via the Quran, all Muslims must believe in God, His revelations, His angels, His messengers, and in the Day of Judgment. The Quran describes the purpose of creation as follows, Blessed be he in whose hand is the kingdom, he is powerful over all things, who created death and life that he might examine which of you is best in deeds, and he is the Almighty, 
the forgiving end and I created not the jinn and mankind except that they should be obedient. Obedience testifies to the oneness of God in His Lordship, His names, and His attributes. Terrenal life is a test, how one acts determines whether one's soul goes to Janet or to Ha Hanam. However, on the Day of Judgment the final decision is of Allah alone. The five pillars of Islam are duties incumbent to every Muslim, they are, Shahada, Salat, Zakah, Sum, and Hajj. They derive from the Hadith works, notably of Sahih al-Bukhari and Sahih Muslim. The five pillars are not mentioned directly in the Quran. Beliefs differ among the Kalam. The Sunni and the Ahmadiyya concept of predestination is divine decree, likewise, the Shia concept of predestination is divine justice, in the esoteric view of the Sufis, the universe exists only for God's pleasure, creation is a grand game, wherein Allah is the greatest prize. The Sufi view of the meaning of life stems from the Hadith Qudsi that states I was a hidden treasure and loved to be known. Therefore I created the creation that I might be known. One possible interpretation of this view is that the meaning of life for an individual is to know the nature of God, and the purpose of all of creation is to reveal that nature, and to prove its value as the ultimate treasure, that is God. However, this hadith is stated in various forms and interpreted in various ways by people, such, as Abdul Baha of the Baha'i Faith, and in IBN Araba SFUA superscript 1 pound AA superscript 1 pound LA ICOM. The Baha'i Faith emphasizes the unity of humanity. To Baha'is, the purpose of life is focused on spiritual growth and service to humanity. Human beings are viewed as intrinsically spiritual beings. People's lives in this material world provide extended opportunities to grow, to develop divine qualities and virtues, and the prophets were sent by God to facilitate this. In the Judaic worldview, the meaning of life is to elevate the physical world and prepare it for the world to come, the Messianic era. This is called Tikkun Olam. Olam Habia can also mean the spiritual afterlife, and there is debate concerning the eschatological order. However, Judaism is not focused on personal salvation, but on communal and individual spiritualist actions in this world. Judaism's most important feature is the worship of a single, incomprehensible, transcendent, one, indivisible, absolute being, who created and governs the universe. Closeness with the God of Israel is through study of his Torah, and adherence to its mitzvot. In traditional Judaism, God established a special covenant with a people, the people of Israel, at Mount Sinai, giving the Jewish commandments. Torah comprises the written Pentateuch and the transcribed oral tradition, further developed through the generations. The Jewish people are intended as a kingdom of priests and a holy nation and a light to the nations, influencing the other peoples to keep their own religio-ethical seven laws of Noah. The Messianic era is seen as the perfection of this dual path to God. Jewish observances involve ethical and ritual, affirmative and prohibitive injunctions. Modern Jewish denominations differ over the nature, relevance, and emphases of mitzvot. Jewish philosophy emphasizes that God is not affected or benefited, but the individual and society benefit by drawing close to God. The rationalist Maimonides sees the ethical and ritual divine commandments as a necessary, but insufficient preparation for philosophical understanding of God, with its love and awe. Among fundamental values in the Torah are pursuit of justice, compassion, peace, kindness, hard work, prosperity, humility, and education. The world to come 
prepared in the present, elevates man to an everlasting connection with God. Simeon the righteous says, the world stands on three things, on Torah, on worship, and on acts of loving kindness. The prayer book relates, Blessed is our God who created us for his honor, and planted within us everlasting life. Of this context, the Talmud states, everything that God does is for the good, including suffering. The Jewish mystical Kabbalah gives complementary esoteric meanings of life, as well as Judaism providing an imminent relationship with God. In Kabbalah the spiritual and physical creation is a paradoxical manifestation of the immanent aspects of God's being, related to the Shekinah. Jewish observance unites the Sephirot on high, restoring harmony to creation. In Lurianic Kabbalah, the meaning of life is the messianic rectification of the shattered sparks of God's persona, exiled in physical existence through the actions of Jewish observance. Through this, in Hasidic Judaism the ultimate essential desire of God is the revelation of the omnipresent divine essence through materiality, achieved by man from within his limited physical realm, when the body will give life to the soul. Christianity has its roots in Judaism, and shares much of the latter faith's ontology, its central beliefs derive from the teachings of Jesus Christ, as presented in the New Testament. Life's purpose in Christianity is to seek divine salvation through the grace of God and intercession of Christ. The New Testament speaks of God wanting to have a relationship with humans both in this life and the life to come, which can happen only if one's sins are forgiven. In the Christian view, Humankind was made in the image of God and perfect, but the fall of man caused the progeny of the first parents to inherit original sin. The sacrifice of Christ's passion, death, and resurrection provide the means for transcending that impure state. The means for doing so varies between different groups of Christians, but all rely on belief in Jesus his work on the cross and his resurrection as the fundamental starting point for a relationship with God. Faith in God is found in Ephesians 2 8 a euro 9 a euro for by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not as a result of works, that no one should boast. A recent alternative Christian theological discourse interprets Jesus as revealing that the purpose of life is to elevate our compassionate response to human suffering. Nonetheless the conventional Christian position is that people are justified by belief in the propitiatory sacrifice of Jesus' death on the cross. The Gospel maintains that through this belief, the barrier that sin has created between man and God is destroyed and allows God to change people and instill in them a new heart after his own will, and the ability to do it. This is what the terms reborn or saved almost always refer to. In the Westminster Shorter Catechism, the first question is, what is the chief end of man, that is, what is man's main purpose? The answer is, man's chief end is to glorify God and enjoy him forever. God requires one to obey the revealed moral law saying, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. The Baltimore Catechism answers the question why did God make you? By saying God made me to know him, to love him, and to serve him in this world and to be happy with him forever in heaven. The Apostle Paul also answers this question in his speech on the Areopagus in Athens, and he has made from one blood every nation of men to dwell on all the face of the earth, and has determined their pre-appointed times and the boundaries of their dwellings, so that they should seek the Lord, in the hope that they might grope for him and find him, though he is not far from each one of us.
Catholicism's way of thinking is better expressed through the principle and foundation of St. Ignatius of Loyola, the human person is created to praise, reverence, and serve God our Lord, and by doing so, to save his or her soul. All other things on the face of the earth are created for human beings in order to help them pursue the end for which they are created. It follows from this that one must use other created things, in so far as they help towards one's end, and free oneself from them, in so far as they are obstacles to one's end. To do this, we need to make ourselves indifferent to all created things, provided the matter is subject to our free choice and there is no other prohibition. Thus, as far as we are concerned, we should not want health more than illness, wealth more than poverty, fame more than disgrace, a long life more than a short one, and similarly for all the rest, but we should desire and choose only what helps us more towards the end for which we are created. Mormonism teaches that the purpose of life on earth is to gain knowledge and experience and to have joy. Mormons believe that humans are literally the spirit children of God the Father, and thus have the potential to progress to become like Him. Mormons teach that God provided His children the choice to come to earth, which is considered a crucial stage in their development a euro wherein a mortal body, coupled with the freedom to choose, makes for an environment to learn and grow. The fall of Adam is not viewed as an unfortunate or unplanned cancellation of God's original plan for a paradise, rather the opposition found in mortality is an essential element of God's plan because the process of enduring and overcoming challenges, difficulties, and temptations provides opportunities to gain wisdom and strength, thereby learning to appreciate and choose good and reject evil. Because God is just, he allows those who were not taught the gospel during mortality to receive it after death in the spirit world, so that all of his children have the opportunity to return to live with God, and reach their full potential. Hinduism is a religious category including many beliefs and traditions. Since Hinduism was the way of expressing meaningful living for a long time, before there was a need for naming it as a separate religion, Hindu doctrines are supplementary and complementary in nature, generally non-exclusive, suggestive and tolerant in content. Most believe that the Atman a Euro, the person's true self a Euro, is eternal. In part, this stems from Hindu beliefs that spiritual development occurs across many lifetimes, and goals should match the state of development of the individual. There are four possible aims to human life, known as the Purusharthas, Kama, Artha, Dharma, encompassing notions such as Ahimsa and Satya and Moksha. In all schools of Hinduism, the meaning of life is tied up in the concepts of Karma, Sansara and Moksha. Existence is conceived as the progression of the Atman across numerous lifetimes and its ultimate progression towards liberation from karma. Particular goals for life are generally subsumed under broader yogas or dharma which are intended to create more favorable reincarnations, though they are generally positive acts in this life as well. Traditional schools of Hinduism often worship devas which are manifestations of Ishvara, these devas are taken as ideal forms to be identified with as a form of spiritual improvement. In short, the goal is to realize the fundamental truth about oneself. This thought is conveyed in the Mahavyakyas, Aham Brahmasmi, Praja plus or minus A Nam Brahma and Ayam A Euro TMA Brahma. Later schools reinterpreted the Vedas to focus on Brahman, the one without a second, as a central god-like figure. In Monist Advaita Vedanta, Atman is ultimately indistinguishable from Brahman, and the goal of life is to know or realize that one's Atman is identical to Brahman. 
to the Upanishads, whoever becomes fully aware of the Atman, as one's core of self, realizes identity with Brahman, and, thereby, achieves moksha. Advaita Vedanta and other Bhakta schools have a dualist interpretation. Brahman is seen as a supreme being with a personality and manifest qualities. The Atman depends upon Brahman for its existence, the meaning of life is achieving moksha through love of God and upon his grace. Vishnavism is a branch of Hinduism in which the principal belief is the identification of Vishnu or Narayana as the one supreme God. This belief contrasts with the Krishna-centered traditions, such as Vallabha, Nimbaraka, and Gaudiya, in which Krishna is considered to be the one and only supreme God and the source of all avatars. Vaishnava theology includes the central beliefs of Hinduism such as monotheism, reincarnation, samsara, karma, and the various yoga systems, but with a particular emphasis on devotion to Vishnu through the process of bhakta yoga, often including singing Vishnu's names, meditating upon his form and performing deity worship. The practices of deity worship are primarily based on texts such as Pa plus or minus Karitra and various Samhitas. One popular school of thought, Gaudiya Vyashnavism, teaches the concept of Akintya Beta Abhita. In this, Krishna is worshipped as the single true God, and all living entities are eternal parts and the supreme personality of the Godhead Krishna. Thus the constitutional position of a living entity is to serve the Lord with love and devotion. The purpose of human life especially is to think beyond the animalistic way of eating, sleeping, mating and defending and engage the higher intelligence to revive the lost relationship with Krishna. Jainism is a religion originating in ancient India, its ethical system promotes self-discipline above all else. Through following the ascetic teachings of Jina, a human achieves enlightenment. Jainism divides the universe into living and non-living beings. Only when the living become attached to the non-living does suffering result. Therefore, happiness is the result of self-conquest and freedom from external objects. The meaning of life may then be said to be to use the physical body to achieve self-realization and bliss. Jains believe that every human is responsible for his or her actions and all living beings have an eternal soul, Jiva. Jains believe all souls are equal because they all possess the potential of being liberated and attaining moksha. The Jain view of karma is that every action, every word, Every thought produces, besides its visible, an invisible, transcendental effect on the soul. Jainism includes strict adherence to ahimsa, a form of non-violence that goes far beyond vegetarianism. Jains refuse food obtained with unnecessary cruelty. Many practice a lifestyle similar to veganism due to the violence of modern dairy farms and others exclude root vegetables from their diets in order to preserve the lives of the plants from which they eat. Buddhists practice to embrace with mindfulness the ill-being and well-being that is present in life. Buddhists practice to see the causes of ill-being and well-being in life. For example, one of the causes of suffering is unhealthy attachment to objects material or non-material. The Buddhist essay Tras and Tantras do not speak about the meaning of life or the purpose of life, but about the potential of human life to end suffering, for example through embracing cravings and conceptual attachments. Attaining and perfecting dispassion is a process of many levels that ultimately results in the state of nirvana. Nirvana means freedom from both suffering and rebirth. Theravada Buddhism is generally considered to be close to the early Buddhist practice. It promotes the concept of Vibhajavada, literally teaching of analysis, 
which says that insight must come from the aspirant's experience, critical investigation, and reasoning instead of by blind faith. However, the Theravadan tradition also emphasizes heeding the advice of the wise, considering such advice and evaluation of one's own experiences to be the two tests by which practices should be judged. The Theravadan goal is liberation from suffering, according to the Four Noble Truths. This is attained in the achievement of Nirvana, or unbinding which also ends the repeated cycle of birth, old age, sickness, and death. The way to attain Nirvana is by following and practicing the Noble Eightfold Path. Mahayana Buddhist schools de emphasize the traditional view of the release from individual suffering and attainment of awakening. In Mahayana, the Buddha is seen as an eternal, immutable, inconceivable, omnipresent being. The fundamental principles of Mahayana doctrine are based on the possibility of universal liberation from suffering for all beings, and the existence of the transcendent Buddha nature which is the eternal Buddha essence present, but hidden and unrecognized, in all living beings. Philosophical schools of Mahayana Buddhism, such as Chan slash Zen and the Vajrayana Tibetan and Shinjin schools, explicitly teach that Bodhisattvas should refrain from full liberation, allowing themselves to be reincarnated into the world until all beings achieve enlightenment. Devotional schools such as Pure Land Buddhism seek the aid of celestial Buddhasa Euro individuals who have spent lifetimes accumulating positive karma, and use that accumulation to aid all. The monotheistic Sikh religion was founded by Guru Nanak Dev, the term Sikh means student, which denotes that followers will lead their lives forever learning. This system of religious philosophy and expression has been traditionally known as the Gurmat or the Sikh Dharma. The followers of Sikhism are ordained to follow the teachings of the ten Sikh Gurus, or enlightened leaders, as well as the holy scripture entitled the Gura Granth Sahib, which includes selected works of many philosophers from diverse socio-economic and religious backgrounds. The Sikh gurus say that salvation can be obtained by following various spiritual paths, so Sikhs do not have a monopoly on salvation, the Lord dwells in every heart, and every heart has its own way to reach Him. Sikhs believe that all people are equally important before God. Sikhs balance their moral and spiritual values with the quest for knowledge and they aim to promote a life of peace and equality but also of positive action. A key distinctive feature of Sikhism is a non-anthropomorphic concept of God, to the extent that one can interpret God as the universe itself. Sikhism thus sees life as an opportunity to understand this God as well as to discover the divinity which lies in each individual. While a full understanding of God is beyond human beings, Nanak described God as not wholly unknowable, and stressed that God must be seen from the inward eye, or the heart, of a human being. Devotees must meditate to progress towards enlightenment and the ultimate destination of a Sikh is to lose the ego completely in the love of the Lord and finally merge into the Almighty Creator. Nanak emphasized the revelation through meditation, as its rigorous application permits the existence of communication between God and human beings. Taoist cosmogony emphasizes the need for all sentient beings and all man to return to the primordial or to rejoin with the oneness of the universe by way of self-cultivation and self-realization. All adherents should understand and be in tune with the ultimate truth. Taoists believe all things were originally from Taiji and Tao, and the meaning in life for the adherents is to realize the temporal nature of the existence. Only introspection can then help us to find our innermost reasons for living, the simple answer is here within ourselves. Shinto is the native religion of Japan. Shinto means the path of the kami, 
but more specifically, it can be taken to mean the divine crossroad where the Kami chooses his way. The divine crossroad signifies that all the universe is divine spirit. This foundation of free will, choosing one's way, means that life is a creative process. Shinto wants life to live, not to die. Shinto sees death as pollution and regards life as the realm where the divine spirit seeks to purify itself by rightful self-development. Shinto wants individual human life to be prolonged forever on earth as a victory of the divine spirit in preserving its objective personality in its highest forms. The presence of evil in the world, as conceived by Shinto, does not stultify the divine nature by imposing on divinity responsibility for being able to relieve human suffering while refusing to do so. The sufferings of life are the sufferings of the divine spirit in search of progress in the objective world. There are many new religious movements in East Asia, and some with millions of followers, Kondojo, Tenrikyo, Caoaai, and Saikonoai. New religions typically have unique explanations for the meaning of life. For example, in Tenrikyo, one is expected to live a joyous life by participating in practices that create happiness for oneself and others. The mystery of life and its true meaning is an often recurring subject in popular culture, featured in entertainment media and various forms of art. In Monty Python's The Meaning of Life, there are several allusions to the meaning of life. At the end of the film, a character played by Michael Palin is handed an envelope containing the meaning of life, which he opens and reads out to the audience, well, it's nothing very special. Uh, try to be nice to people, avoid eating fat, read a good book every now and then, get some walking in, and try to live together in peace and harmony with people of all creeds and nations. Many other Python sketches and songs are also existential in nature, questioning the importance we place on life and other meaning of life related questioning. John Cleese also had his sitcom character Basil Fawlty contemplating the futility of his own existence in Fawlty Towers. In Douglas Adams' popular comedy book, movie, television, and radio series The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, the answer to the ultimate question of life, the universe, and everything is given the numeric solution 42, after seven and a half million years of calculation by a giant supercomputer called Deep Thought. When this answer is met with confusion and anger from its constructors, Deep Thought explains that I think the problem, to be quite honest with you, is that you've never actually known what the question is. In the continuation of the book, the question is proposed to be how many roads must a man walk down, before you can call him a man from Bob Dylan's Blowin' in the Wind. In the sequel, The Restaurant at the End of the Universe, it states that the question is 6x9. While 6x9 is written as 54 in base 10, it would be written as 42 in base 13 which author Adams claimed was completely serendipitous. In the Simpsons episode Homer the Heretic, a representation of God agrees to tell Homer what the meaning of life is, but the show's credits begin to roll just as he starts to say what it is. In Red vs. Blue Season 1 Episode 1 the character Simmons asks Griff the question why are we here? and is a major line in the series. In Bill and Ted's excellent adventure, the characters are asked how we should live our lives, and reply with a version of the golden rule be excellent to each other followed by party on, dudes. In Person of Interest Season 5 Episode 13, an artificial intelligence referred to as the machine tells Harold Finch that the secret of life is everyone dies alone. But if you mean something to someone, if you help someone, or love someone, 
If even a single person remembers you then maybe you never really die at all. This phrase is then repeated at the very end of the show to add emphasis to the finale. What is the meaning of life? Is a question many people ask themselves at some point during their lives, most in the context what is the purpose of life? Some popular answers include. 